Hello, everybody. Welcome to the bakery. On today's menu, we are we are talking about an idol scandal. For today's speed paint, we'll have the last portion of my chi from the anime Chobits illustration and the beginning of an original illustration. Enjoy your stay. In any country, there are celebrities. In America, we have names like Ariana Grande, Kanye West, Justin Bieber, just to name a few. They perform, appear on TV, but there's something unique to them that the average person does not experience. These people's lives are treated like a commodity, constantly being watched and scrutinized. Their every move and life decision could be a headline. Everything is watched under a magnifying glass. Sometimes the most minuscule mistakes can ruin careers. Actually, in some cases, more than that, scandals can actually heighten an American celebrity's career. This isn't the case when it comes to idols in Japan, however, especially when the scandal is a, re a relationship. The temperature culturally with a Japanese idol in general compared to just a singer or a celebrity is different, and that difference is even bolder when compared to US celebrities. Despite being idolized and having obsessed followers, American idols can still do things that may be deemed taboo, such as getting tattoos or getting into drugs, uh, smoking, having edgy or otherwise unruly personalities. The Japanese idol is its own deep culture, which to a fresh set of eyes may seem a uh, little unhealthy or maybe even inappropriate. There is a glorified world of adorable young women and girls who dance, sing, and charm their audience. They are generally the girl next door who is just a step above the rest, a gem waiting to be polished. As she goes through her tenure as an idol, her gem glints brighter and brighter. A lot of songs feature ro romance-laden lyrics and serve to uplift quite the demographic. <laughs> that demographic being primarily middle-aged businessmen. Not all, but most. Idols are seen as pure, untouchable, and almost as if they belong to their fan base. There is almost an obsession with idol fans, often referred to as Wota. There is a detachment from reality, for certain with some of these wota. Thankfully, things have changed a little bit over the years, with idols pushing the boundaries when it comes to the definition of an idol. At the end of the day, they are still a charming young lady singing and dancing, but they are breaking the image of a picture-perfect, pure, untouched girl who will some grow, someday grow up into some, like, fairy tale housewife. <laughs> there are edgier concepts, idols who smoke, idols who do all sorts of things that break the walls of what it means to be an idol. Either way, there is still a huge, gleaming issue in all of this. An idol seen with a male could lose everything. Sayuki, the idol and the subject of today's video, nicknamed Sayubehe, joined Upfront Promotions Hello Project as a trainee idol under Hello Project Egg at just 12 years old in 2009. In about three years, when she was 15, she formally debuted into a new group, Juice Juice, in 2013. The group ran on to become a fairly successful girl group, alongside their other Hello Project sister groups, Morning Musume, Cute, and Berry's Kubol. They had even started performing tours around the world. Saebe herself had been regarded as one of the better singers in Juice Juice, if not all of Hello Project. I'll play some short clips from the many available compilations on YouTube of Saebe's Utahime singing, uh, and pray that this video doesn't get bonked. Fast forward to today and Sayubi is 23. Like many idols, she has spent her most important formative years drenched in sweat and building her soul out on stage. She's been in stage plays, movies, TV dramas, all as a young woman. For 11 years, she's given up everything to dance and sing her way to major stages in Japan. She would lose all of that in February 2021, this year. She was caught with Yuri, another singer slash celebrity in Japan. Yuri, who's 27 years old today, is another highly regarded vocalist, with his song Dry Flower being the third most played song in the history of Japan on streaming platforms. If I remember correctly, uh, I saw something to like a hundred million listens 
across various platforms. He apparently has dubbed himself the King of Shibuya since he used his, uh, <laughs> his good looks and talent to go out on dates with female fans and get them to pay for his food and clothes instead of getting a part-time job when he was starting out like many other street musicians do. Well, apparently he set his sights on her, Sayuki, and the two began dating. February 11th, Bunshun which is this like gossipy kind of journalism website, posting an article airing the relationship. Sayube and Yuri were caught in some sort of half-living situation with Sayube returning to his condo after a concert on bike. They were photographed with one of Yuri's staff members. Sayu was seen with him after a date in a restaurant, taking care of his laundry, all that kind of stuff. A lot of the time, with these sorts of paparazzi pictures that I've noticed in the past, there's usually like a speculation as to who it is instead of just outright saying it's it's so-and-so. But the two of them were 100% caught red-handed, and there's no arguing out of it, I guess. Singer-songwriter Yuri and Juice Juice idol Takagi Sayuki were in a relationship. The next day, Hello Project, which is the umbrella company that Juice Juice is under, announced on their website that Saiki was being removed from Juice Juice and would no longer participate in future activities under the group after the very next day. The article from Hello Project also had a note from Saiki underneath it, and this is a translation. Thank you for your warm support. I, Saiki Takagi, will end my activities with Juice Juice and Hello Project. I apologize for the inconvenience and worry caused by this sudden announcement. I'm really sorry for causing you trouble and worry. As a member of the group, I was not aware of my actions and acted rashly. I have betrayed the feelings of many people. Juice Juice is a place that has taught me many things and helped me grow in many ways. And above all, I love and cherish the members, so I am filled with regret. I also want to thank all the fans and people who have supported me. I'm really sorry for betraying your feelings with my thoughtless actions. I don't think I can ask for forgiveness. I've thought about how I should take responsibility and how I should repay you. I've decided to do that. My time as a member of Harapo Egg and Juice Juice has been invaluable to me. It has been an unforgettable time for me as I have been able to meet my dear friends, staff, and fans. I really can't thank you enough. Please continue to support Juice Juice. February 12th, 2021. Sayuki Takagi. She was still under upfront promotion, the label company for Hello Project. However, March 31st, it was announced that she would retire from upfront completely. In the article, it was mentioned that from the very beginning when discussing her future, she insisted that she, if she wasn't a member of Juice Juice, that she would leave the company to pursue her own career in music. The staff, although worried for her and tried to get her to change her mind, respected her decision and let her go when she persevered with the same opinion. Something else would surface, however. Bunshin released another article from an anonymous Anonymous woman. Yuri had a bit of a cheating problem. Let me read some tweets generously translated by an account, Japan English J Kanda. I don't I'm not sure how to say that, I'll link it. <laughs> that describes the situation written in the article. Aesan, as she's referenced in the article, heard rumors about him since she had mutual friends, but still responded to his DM where it escalated to him saying he wanted to date her. She had no idea about Sayuki. He said the usual routine or she said their usual routine was watching YouTube or movies. If it was YouTube, it usually had him in it. She'd spend the night, then leave the morning after they ate. As time went on, she started noticing belongings that looked like they were a woman's and not hers. At first, it was a manicure set, which she brushed off as someone's that he just left on the sink, but she spotted a different toothbrush and a woman's underwear hanging. He said that the toothbrush was a prostitute's, and the underwear was because, quote unquote, a lady comes and does the cleaning. How this makes sense, I don't know. <laughs> Then he started canceling plans more frequently, saying he was tied up with work. She questioned whether he'd get booked that quickly. The worst was when he invited her for dinner, then hang out, and despite the last train already ending, canceled on her at 5 in the morning. She told him, It doesn't make sense for us to date, huh? If you wanna go, if you wanna be with other women, go right ahead. I'm done. He didn't like that ending and tried to go, tried to get her to go over to pick up her things, but canceled on that too. After she saw the report with Saiki and thinking about how suspiciously he carried himself, she quote unquote strangely accepted that there was another woman. Bunshin has reports from two other women and cited Aesan showing them her DM while interviewing for this piece. Then this is followed by another article with another woman. Again, tweets from the same account. Here we go. Woman number three. B-san was approached at a drinking party in November, and while she thought he looked like a, <laughs> a rascal playboy, he didn't drink and was overall a nice guy. She liked that gap. They exchanged lines and went to dinner a few days later. B asked what he does. He said YouTube and studio work. 
and didn't think anything was suspicious. He paid for the meal and they went their separate ways. She got a text at the beginning of December inviting her to his place and they end up doing the same kind of things that Aesan did. B said nothing more came of it until the middle of December when he formally asked her out. I've spent a lot of time thinking about you. If I said I liked you, would you go out with me? It's not for sex or whatever, but what if we started dating? She liked that, and they started having something more physical after. Thereafter. He had confessed to Aesan on December 20th, so both A and B started dating him around the same time. B said they were planning dates, but she also mostly got invited the day of. She said there were times he got cute and said, I want you to come over. It was mostly more of the same, but she said one time he sang a new song and dry flower with his guitar. B said the cancellations and lack of communication started in January. Ask her if she's free, then say he contact her later. He didn't. They figured out Takagi had more going on in November slash December, but had less in January, which explained the sudden loss of cancellations. Looking back, B said she noticed pink items in the bathroom, like hairbrushes and hair irons. She said she saw three. She asked if she could leave her face cleanser there. He paused before saying okay. But 10 days later, her brand new product was half used. B also noticed the woman's underwear, and he told her if it was his it was his friend's girlfriend's. She also noted he asked her if she was gonna clean the kitchen and do housework. Quote unquote, he must think it's obvious the girlfriend does the housework. Based at a day before the report came out, she noticed Yuri deleted his line account and got worried. Now that she saw what was going on, she feels much better and that she wasn't sad about being ghosted now that she realized who she was dealing with. Good on her, right? F that clown. But wait guys, there's more. Enter Si-chan from another article. Woman number four. Si is in her 30s and works in entertainment. She messaged him the day before the report and was told, I've deleted it from getting too many spam lines. I've decided to delete it altogether. Si was pissed when she saw the report about Saiki. She was being called Onne-san, which means older sister. Si's friend starts, This all starts in February 2017 when they were introduced by a mutual friend. Si works in casting and has a good sense of who will sell. She... It seems she liked him immediately. He was still in the band and asked C for work since he didn't have much money since they weren't getting results. C said she couldn't give him a lot now but if he needs money she'll help out. He replied that he wanted a house in Tokyo so C let him live in her house. C noticed he'd wear the same sweater over and over so she bought him expensive clothes so he could look better for his street lives. He once said he... <laughs> Quote unquote, his older system bought him a Balenciaga cap he wore, including food. They estimate that she spent 5 million yen on him. C's friend, watching all this, was concerned. C was once relieved. He said he had no interest in women when she told him to let her know if there was anyone so that she could give him some space and that she'd get mad if he didn't wear something that she bought him. They thought it was a painful sight. He left C's house in September to move in with another girl, but said he was moving in with a band member, but still continued to meet up once or twice a week for meals and shopping. When she saw clothes she didn't buy, he said fans bought it for him. An acquaintance of his said that they think Yudi moved in with a girl he met at a bar slash lounge. Decent. <laughs> Decent. <laughs> Christ. And in order to stay on C's good side, said he moved in with a bandmate. Still without money, he got both C and D to pay for his meals and expenses. C and Yudi had plans to meet on Valentine's Day in 2018, but said his mother fell over and he cancelled suddenly. C was worried, but Yudi's acquaintance knew he was living with D. He lied to C, saying he was back in Chiba, which I believe is his like birth town, and commutes to Tokyo. He would end meals with C early since, quote unquote, Chiba is far, and explained his, um, November 9th YouTube video of his new place as something his bandmate borrowed for filming and that he couldn't live alone for tax reasons. Until his big break, he told C he was working at a convenience store part-time as part of a work agency to get out of meeting C, however, no one else heard he was working. When the port came out, she finally realized he moved on to another woman and that the job was a lie. After his indies track, Kaku Rinbo, started doing well on iTunes and line music, he met with C much less, but she still continued to be his quote-unquote good older sister. It went from one to two times a week to one to two times a month, and after his major debut, it dropped even more. He still called her Onae-chan to stay on her good side. She knew how fickle the entertainment industry was, would occasionally scold him, 
so that he doesn't get too big-headed. He once said, Teens are dumb since they flock anywhere that's buzzing a bit. I have no freaking idea what that means. <laughs> she had plans to meet him this past February 4th, but he cancelled suddenly citing work. Then she saw the reports on the 11th. C was thrown into chaos, not knowing what was true and what was a lie. Bunshin called C to confirm her friend's story. After a few tries, she answered. C laughed softly when she was told about the content of the article on her and said she spoiled him for four years and believed both in him and that he would sell. She introduced him to different people in the industry. Reading Saiki's report, her mind went blank. She was willing to forgive that, but what she can't forgive is she messaged him when he deleted his line and he didn't tell her about what was going on to be reported before it came out. She thought there was mutual trust, but he must have saw her as someone just convenient to use. While Sei didn't have a romantic relationship with him, she did have romantic feelings. This was more a report of how he tends to use women to his advantage. Yeah, so there's woman A, B, C, D, and then Sayuki. <laughs> and that's all that we know about. Saiki lost everything for this goon. There isn't hard evidence for this necessarily, but it appears that both staff in the situation with Saiki and Yuri were aware of the situation. I'm under the impression with Hello Project idols, it's in their contract, not to date, but they will allow their idols to be in a relationship so long as they aren't caught. Once they are caught, the cord is cut on them. I can't speak for Japanese fans, but over in the West, the opinion is overwhelmingly disappointed in Hello Project, the company. People had begun to believe that maybe, even with one of their top line idols, they would step in and support the girls, especially those who are in their 20s and old enough to make decisions such as that, just like Saiki. They're upset that for a situation that's completely reasonable for an adult woman to make, she has to apologize and she loses everything. Meanwhile, Yuri is still making music and he's still making YouTube videos like nothing happened. Hello Project was quick to remove Saiki from their content, postponing Juice Juice's single to re-record and release without you Saiki's presence in it whatsoever. The new single is up on YouTube right now, released after all the drama, with all the members sans the now removed Saiki. Every time this sort of thing happens, there's always discourse between Western fans. There's the, this is BS and the company sucks, and which is majority of the opinion, and then the few, she knew this, she made the decision, and it's her fault, you know? When first announced, people were ready to support her in like Western forums, Western comments. Some really hoped that this would change the temperature with idols and dating, only for her retirement to hit immediately after. The fact is that she did indeed sign a contract. She did know better. She, and I'm sure Yuri, were fully aware. I wouldn't say per se that it's her fault, but it's not surprising for her to lose her job after knowingly breaking a contract. The fact, however, that Yuri sees no sort of consequence after all of this is definitely, definitely glaring evidence of some sort of misbalance, right? Whining about it in Facebook comments isn't going to change that though. What we need to do as fans of Japanese pop idols, or even a passerby wanting to change the tides, support Sayuki in her endeavors from here on out. She's made a Twitter and an Instagram, which I'll link below, and give her follow and her, your support as her new stuff comes out over time. Meanwhile, let's not give this breadstick of a human any sort of attention. Do not stream his music. Block his accounts if you can. Make your thoughts known. I'd say in the future that if another idol scandal happens and the majority of people dislike that, that maybe it's time to stop supporting the company. Don't watch the music videos on YouTube. Don't stream any of the singles from any of the groups. Don't buy their merch. Don't attend their lives. Do whatever you can to make the company see that this, this isn't going to fly anymore. Hit them in their money maker. That's the best advice I can offer. Alright, thank you everybody for watching and listening. Let me know your thoughts. You could support the channel by taking the like button out on a pasta dinner and perhaps take the subscribe button's car to a car wash for it. Just a little surprise, you know? <laughs> I'll be streaming art over on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays in between 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Instagram, Twitter, commission info, and all that other good business, frequently asked questions, etc. will be in the description below. Let me know your questions, comments, concerns, like usual. Be good, everybody. Be safe. Be healthy. Bye.